So um, let's um, get into the word of God. We are laboring on a theme, see the kingdom, see the kingdom. Jesus said, unless we are born again, we, we cannot see the kingdom. And one of the reasons why we have to see the, the kingdom is so that it may become real to us, not just an abstract concept, but it may become real and so that we can know that uh, we are not just people who have started going to church, but there is also a kingdom that we belong to. And not unless we, we see the kingdom in that way, we can never be able to be uh, relevant for it. We can never be effective in it. And, and of course, we can never be able to benefit from it because it will be far away from us. We will not be even thinking about it. You know, when, when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray, when they asked and they said, Lord, teach us to pray, you know, and he gave them a model of prayer. One of the lines there was, uh, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. So even as it was in the heart of Jesus for the kingdom of God to be established here on earth, in our lives, in our marriages, it's important that we see it. It's important that we recognize it. Uh, it's important that it becomes real and tangible so that whatever it is that we are doing in church, for the church, through the church, we know that it is towards the establishment of this kingdom that Jesus said we need to pray that it comes and that it is going to be um, established. Are we together? So, so we, we are grateful to, to God uh, for that. And that's why our subject uh, last week was kingdom vision. Right, kingdom vision. So that, you know, even when it comes to developing visions for our own personal lives, for our families, for our businesses, for churches, uh, it, it, may, it, may be, it may be from a perspective of the vision of the kingdom of God. It's important that we see what God is doing in and through his kingdom. And so that we find a way to plug in and to connect to a greater vision of the kingdom. Because whatever vision that you might be developing in your life, it's, it has to be relevant for, for the kingdom of God, right? It, it has to find um, its expression even through the kingdom of God or the kingdom of God has got to find its expression through the vision that you have for your own personal life and also uh, for your family, for your business, whatever it is that you are uh, engaging on. Amen. And today um, we are going to talk on the subject kingdom people. Kingdom people. We are the people of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom that is from above. Amen. Say I'm a kingdom person. <laughs> Say we are kingdom people. <laughs> Turn with me to the book of First Peter chapter 2. From verse number nine, if you don't have it on your phone, uh, you can read from the screens, of course, if you are able to make out that font, amen. Uh, don't blame me, you know, these fonts are recommended uh, uh, for me by the creative team there. So, and sometimes, you know, I can see that, yeah, no, it's, it's a bit difficult to read, but it's nice. It, it looks nice. So I'm not going to change it because it's nice, you know. Yeah, some people might struggle to read, but I choose to keep it because it's nice, you know. Um, some words, it looks like somebody took a razor and slashed them, and I don't know why, but it looks cool, you know. It looks nice, so let's keep it, amen. So if you're struggling with reading from the screen, grab your phone, download, download a Bible app, or open your Bible, and let's read from 1 Peter 2, from verse number 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, 
but are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, which is alive, your word, which is powerful, your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray that you may speak to us this morning, that you may renew our minds through your word, that you may impart your wisdom in us through your word, Father. Build us up, O God, we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm sure we all know that our God created the heavens and the earth. Our God is the creator of the heavens and the creator of the earth. And this whole earth and everything in it belongs to him because it was created by him. It comes from him. Are we together? Psalm 24 and verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. And even though God created everything that we see around us, the planets that we see, the stars that we see, the whole universe that we see, the trees, the oceans that we see, great things really, amen. And if you just look at the ocean, you cannot help it but praise God or see the greatness of God and see his creative power, especially when you consider the fact that he just spoke it into existence, you know. And interestingly enough, is that beyond that, this was David now speaking in Psalm chapter number 8. He says, I'm looking at all of these things that you have created and I'm asking myself this question. What is man that you are mindful of him? It is because David was realizing that God has created so many great things and yet God is after people. His heart is after people. People matter to God. God is the God of the people. And you cannot claim to love God and hate his people because God is the God of the people. In Psalm 100 and verse 3, the Bible says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That's who we are. We are the people of God. That's why David says, what is man? That you are mindful of him. After everything else that you have created. I mean, there are other animals that are somehow, according to our own eyes, more majestic than us as human beings. And yet God still seeks after us as his people. And, 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 and as great as we are before the eyes of God, the reality is that we ended up, you know, as people, according to the scriptures, who were plundered uh, by Satan through sin. We, we, we found ourselves robbed of the image and the likeness uh, that is in us. We found ourselves robbed of the destinies and the callings that God had for us. And all because of the fact that Satan did not like the attention that God was giving to us. Because somehow I believe uh, it reminded him of, you know, who he was before he decided to rebel against God. And, and we found ourselves, like I said, through sin, uh, plundered as the people. And the Bible says in Isaiah 42 and verse 22, but this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes and they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey and no one delivers. 
So when we found ourselves plundered and robbed by Satan and through sin, no one was interested in us. No one wanted to deliver us. No one had our best interests at heart. Amen. And the Bible says uh, we are for plunder and no one says restore. In other words, no one was crying out for our restoration, especially uh, so that we can be restored back to who we were before sin came. Are we together? But thank God that in Christ we became the restored people. Amen. When there was no one to save us, when there was no one to deliver us, we were restored in Christ. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. You know, for God so loved us, you know, who, as the people in the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Amen. And when God was sending Jesus Christ, the angel came to his mother and said, you are going to be pregnant and you are going to give birth uh, to, to a son and you are supposed to name him Jesus. Why? Because he's going to save his people from sins because God was after us. Jesus did not come to save the planet per se, but Jesus came to save us as the people of God, saving us from the sin that caused us to be a people plundered and the people robbed away together. Satan, even though at times he appears as if he has, you know, our best interests at heart. How many of you know that sometimes people can come, influence you with wrong things, negative things, under the pretense that they are actually having your best interests at heart, uh, not knowing that their agenda is to bring destruction in your life. This, this is what Jesus meant when he said in John 10 that, you know, the thief does not come except for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You know, no matter what is it that Satan can do for you, at the end of the day, you must know that his agenda is to do these three things in your life, to kill, to destroy, uh, or to steal something from your life. Be it to steal your peace, to steal your joy, to steal the grace and the gift that God has bestowed upon your life. And sometimes we can look as if, you know, we are well entertained. You know, we are well taken care of. We've got everything going in our lives. It's like a chicken that is being taken care of by the owner. The owner will come every day, give it meals, give it water, take, make sure that the, the temperature is fine where the, the chicken stays, not knowing that one day the very same person who is feeding that chicken will show up with a knife to slaughter it for dinner or sell it to somebody who will do the same. And sometimes the devil does that with the lives of the people. Whenever he is still entertaining you, it looks like he wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to have a soft life. He wants you to, hi, you know, enjoy it looks like he wants to entertain you. It looks like he likes you. It looks like he does not want you to get bored. But the very same person who is opening up doors of entertainment for you, who is organizing everything for you, who is organizing friends who are going to disciple you in sin. It is the very same person who is going to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. But Jesus says, thank God for Jesus. He says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Soft life can only be found in Christ. I remember one day I once told you this story. If you are hearing it for the second or the third or the fourth time, it's okay. And it's for the sake of those who are going to be hearing it for the first time today. You know, I remember when I got saved in, in 1999, it was just a couple of months. Uh, because before I got saved, um, I mean, I thought I was enjoying life. I was out there having fun. You know, you will find me in every party, street bash, B.O.B., do you still have BOBs? No, you don't, you don't, you don't, the, the, probably, probably you don't even know BOBs, right? Uh, you know Conquer now, amen. So, so things like those. So, so I, I, I was having fun and many people, you know, I had many friends out there, you know, 
that I used to spend a lot of time with, we were having fun together. So this lady heard that I, 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 I became saved and I'm no longer drinking and all of that. And, and one day I met her in some shop and she said to me, Oh, Jacob, what is I don't pull also? Ah, can we enjoy a life, man? When I decide I'll pull also. Hey, I was grieved because I was still very, you know, an infant. I was still an infant in, in Christ. So I didn't know much, you know. And I was so grieved. I walked away so embarrassed and disappointed. Because sometimes you, you think, you know, because you decided to be a Christian, everybody's going to clap hands for you. Hey, you, you will be shocked that even... Must I say it? You will be shocked that even your very same family that, that, that was complaining that Uhamama party and all of that, you know, once you decide you are now a Christian, they themselves will mock you. To say, oh, what about Msalani? Msalani is not going to be good. Msalani is not going to be good. Msalani is not going to be good. You know, instead of saying, thank God, you are no longer partying, but you are going to church. Amen. So I walked away grieved in my heart. I was like, oh, you know, what a sad thing. I, I didn't ever, you know when somebody tells, says something to you and you don't ever come back. But I felt at that point, I did not even know where the thought came from um, because I was like, like I'm telling you very much of a baby in the Lord. You know, I just sensed so strong in my heart, the Lord ministering to me saying, you know, he who has Christ has life. So you are better positioned to enjoy life because you have life in you. She has, she has no clue what she's talking about because whatever it is that she thinks she is enjoying is not life because he who does not have the son does not have life because it is only Jesus who says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Soft life is not drinking him away. Soft life is not a, a buying ace a, and yinle en ishon. Dom Perion. What a name. Veve. Vev. Jigajuga. What kind of names are these? Amen. Wow. You can tell by the way he pronounces it that he can't afford it. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't be offended. So Jesus is able to give you the experience of life. You can only be able to taste life in Christ. That's why the Bible says come and taste, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because without him, whatever it is that you think you are enjoying is not life. It is not life. Are we together? So we are a people restored. When you, when, you, when you are now a Christian, when you are now born again, you need to know that you have been restored. The enemy cannot plunder you anymore. He cannot rob you of anything. Because you and I have been restored. But kingdom people... Not only are they restored people, but kingdom people are spiritual people. Because people, whenever we are talking about people here, what we need to understand, what we need to know is that we are not mainly talking about the flesh and blood, the body that you are seeing, but we are talking about the image and the likeness of God in you. We are talking about the soul and the spirit. That is what makes you the people or that is what makes you the person that God wants you to be. Not what we see on the outside. 
Because the kingdom of God is not mainly for the flesh, but it is for the spirit and for the soul. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 50 says, Now this I say, brethren, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Amen. So even when we are talking about the battles of the kingdom, we need to understand that even as the scripture tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not about the flesh and blood, but it's about the powers. It's about the principalities. It's about the forces of darkness. So whenever we, 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 we are talking kingdom and talking about the fact that there are kingdoms that are, you know, at loggerheads with each other, it's not fighting people, but it's understanding the powers that are influencing the people uh, uh, because whether we are aware or not, we are in one way or the other belonging to some kingdom. We are belonging to some kingdom. So, so you, you are going to, from time to time, be faced with the forces and the powers of a particular kingdom that you are not belonging to. But take note that whenever that happens, you are not supposed to engage in any form of warfare as if you are fighting against people. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So then don't reduce it to a carnal nature of fighting. That's why Jesus, when he teaches us uh, how to live like kingdom people, he says we need to learn how to love our enemies. What a difficult thing to do. Why? Because he understands that once you begin to hate like they hate, then you are, you are behaving like they are kingdom. You are allowing the spirit that is influencing them in their kingdom to influence you. This does not mean you are going to have coffee with them. This does not mean you are going to be bosom friends with them. But it simply means understand that as kingdom people, we are expected to walk in love. We are expected to walk in the spirit. We are expected to live in the spirit. Listen to what the Bible tells us in the book of Romans um, chapter number 14 and verse 17. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because the righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit is relevant for the soul and the spirit. Are we together, Bazalan? So it's not about satisfying your flesh. It's not about satisfying your body, but it is going beyond that. And yes, of course, God will take care of our natural needs. He says in his word, he knows that we need all of those things. Even the people in the world need those things and they, are, they can kill to get them. But he tells us to seek first the kingdom of God. In other words, let us make sure that our soul and our spirit is taken care of. And then he says, and all else shall be added unto us. And that is how we are supposed to live as kingdom people. We are first taking care of our soul and of our spirit. Again, Galatians 5 and verse 16 says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we've got to be very spiritual as kingdom people. We need to walk in the spirit. We need to live in the spirit. Not according to the... Um, you know, the way that we, we think being spiritual is today in the church. Because sometimes we think being spiritual is to look very strange at church. We think being spiritual is to actually uh, be so proud to think everybody else around you is carnal. We think being spiritual, it is because you've prayed for two hours in the morning. We think being spiritual, uh, it is speaking in other tongues. That's a good start. That's a good start. The fact that you are praying in tongues, the fact that you can raise up your hands in church and you can worship and you can pray longer than others uh, uh, is, is a good start, but it does not confirm that you are spiritual. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, walk in the spirit. Don't just do an activity in the spirit, but walk in the spirit. Let it be your daily conduct. Because you cannot pray in tongues for two hours in the morning and be mean for the rest of the day. So, so, so as, as kingdom people, we need to realize that being spiritual is not about being spooky. 
It is not about floating in the air. It is not about rolling on the floor. It is not about frowning, you know, your face just so that we can say you are deep and you are spiritual. But it is to allow the Holy Spirit to influence you with his fruit so that it can manifest in your life and so that people around you can be touched and be impacted by the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit in your life. When you are spiritual, it is when you are not allowing the flesh to control you. Because the flesh has got its own desires. Our carnal nature has got its own desires. And as a kingdom person, you are not supposed to allow the flesh to control the way that you deal with other people. The way that you conduct yourself at home. The way that you conduct yourself at work. The way that you conduct yourself in your business. But it is when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide you, to influence your thinking, to influence your speech, to influence your behavior. Then you are spiritual. Then you are spiritual. Are we together, Barcelona? Listen to what verse 17 says. It says, for the flesh lasts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So you can never be spiritual and be controlled by the flesh at the same time. And it says, and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. So there are things that you sometimes wish to do in your flesh. Sometimes when there's a person who did not talk to you properly, you wish you can deal with them. You wish you can give them the peace of your mind. You wish you can show them who you truly are. You wish you can show them how you used to deal with such people before you were saved. But when you are spiritual, you choose to follow the fruit of the Spirit in you. And I like the fact that the Bible in the book of Galatians chapter number 5, it does not really say the fruits of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit. And then it mentions nine things. So it's a ninefold fruit. So in other words, because you know God is wise. In other words, he was simply closing a door <laughs> to the fact that some of us might say, no, for now I'm still, I'm still you know, I, I'm, I know I'm perfect in three fruits. I'm still developing the other four. So be patient with me. So if you truly are born again and the Spirit of God dwells in the inside of you, when, when the fruit of the Spirit is at work in your life, love is going to be accompanied by gentleness. Kindness, patience, long-suffering, peace, jalonjal, you see. So you cannot just say, no, 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 uh, I'll be loving but not kind. I'll be kind and not gentle. So you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit and not be a gentleman. <laughs> If you are truly born again, you've got it, it has got to be seen in you becoming a gentleman at home, a gentleman towards your children, a gentleman at work. You cannot have the fruit of, of the spirit and be carnal and not have self-control. Then you are spiritual. You see, when you are exercising self-control, then you are spiritual. If you are exercising kindness, then you are spiritual. Not, no, that's a good start. That's a good start. But it's not the end. How many of you have met people who are kuraba signing in the morning, but they are hater raba signing for the rest of the day? It's like you, 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 you meet this person at church. They were so deep and so spiritual. Maybe you found them leading intercession. Soka in the morning and you were like, wow, what a spiritual Christian. And tomorrow you meet them at the mall and they are swearing at somebody. Pelamina, I wasn't jealous. I didn't touch you. I didn't beg you. I didn't tell you no mood. 
Like, is, there, is there a clause like that? Sometimes many of us, we wish there was a clause like that. We wish there was a clause like that. Because sometimes, as um, you know, there is a clause like that. As you know, 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 you Yay, 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 But the spirit in you, the spirit in you, the, I said the spirit in you. Hallelujah. And that is what being spiritual is all about. It does not matter how many demons you have casted out. It does not matter whether you've laid hands on the sick and they are recovered. That is not a sign of being spiritual. That's why for me, it's a very difficult thing to deal with people who can look spiritual at church and be mean at home. And one of the reasons, look, let me put it this way. Many people are worried about false prophets, false apostles, false teachers out there, right? I'm not worried about false prophets. God is going to deal with them. I'm not worried about false pastors and teachers out there. God is going to deal with them. I'm worried about the false brethren, false Christians. Because these are the ones that you are sitting next to. Turn to your neighbor and say, I hope the pastor is not talking about you. <laughs> these are the ones that if you are single, because of what you see them do at church every Sunday, you can decide to say yes to their marriage proposal until they manifest. Until they show you who they are. Aye. Now those are the ones that I'm worried because they know how to put on a facade, a religious facade because they know the language. They know how to sing the religious songs. They know how to speak Christianese. They know how to come to church and look like they are, you know, the best Christian you have ever met only to find that they've mastered Christianity just for two hours. But when you meet the very same person at work, you meet the very same person at school, you meet the very same person in somewhere. somewhere. It's like these are two different personalities. But kingdom people are spiritual people who are consistent in their behavior and in their walk with God. What you see at church is what you're going to see at work. And that's why many of us, we can't even invite our colleagues to church because they are going to be shocked at what they are going to see on Sunday. They are going to be surprised because the person they know at work and the one they saw at church is like, what? Are you this spiritual? When you're at church, they find you here during intercession. But at work, in time, Puma, a passage in. And then all of a sudden, when, when you invite them to church, they come. That's why many of us, we don't want people to see us at church. Do you know that there are people who are uncomfortable as soon as a colleague? joins the same church that they serve in, they become uncomfortable. Some of them leave. When you are in business, it's even worse. Because now, the way that you treat your employees needs to show that you are a kingdom person who is very much spiritual. Because you can't send your employee, you can't give them a brown envelope and say, and then on Wednesday you want to open in prayer. You say, let's pray and believe God for this business. Hi. So we've got to learn 
how to walk in the spirit so that we don't fulfill. We don't say that as Christians we don't have these desires. Oh, you, 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 you are born, born again. You, you are so perfect. No. Sometimes you, you feel like doing something wrong. But because you are a kingdom person who has the spirit of God on the inside of you, the spirit of God will prompt you to say, no, we can't go that route if we, you and I are kingdom people. The kingdom we come from does not behave like that. Let me tell you this. Let me, let me say this to young, single no social deal, it's too late. If you are young, you are single. Number one, know what is to be spiritual. Know that first. Pray for discernment to be able to tell between a true and a false Christian. Master that. If God can give you that grace, two, don't be worried about what the person you are thinking of marrying, what they have, what they don't have, what they can afford, what they, don't be worried about that. Don't be worried about that. Just know, let me guarantee you this. If you get married to a true Christian, I'm not talking about a religious person here. I'm not talking about a person who goes to church. Because Yeah. So, 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 and I'm not saying everybody who is doing well is a crook. I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. However, I'm saying it's not seeing a person that they are doing well is no reason enough to marry them. Find a true Christian. The one who is, before you say anything to them, the Lord has already dealt with them. It's like they can say something bad to you now. By the time they start to pray, the conviction is already there. They come back weeping to say they are sorry. I personally think there's nobody dead or alive who knows how to tame a man than God. I'm going to say it one more time. There's nobody dead or alive who is able to tame a man or a woman. Or a woman. Because there are wild women out there. <laughs> there are wild women. I'm a chepus. <laughs> when we were still single and we were praying for, I hey, Jacob, I'm a chepus. Because go, go, go. there are people who are wild out there. But if God can open your eyes to see a kingdom man or a kingdom woman filled with the spirit of God, a, a man or a woman who is able to be influenced, led, directed, convicted by the spirit of God. Let me tell you, no matter how poor they are, at that particular point in time, one thing I can assure you of, one, you are going to have peace in your marriage. That's one. And money can't buy that. Money can't buy that. Somebody said something very powerful. He said, he said, money can buy you a house, but not a home. Money can buy you a bed, but not sleep. <laughs> Money can buy you a watch, but not time. <laughs> Money can pay for your medical bills, but it cannot give you health. So sometimes we go for what money can buy. And, and at the expense of what money cannot buy. 
And sometimes we are so blinded by so many things that we see on the outside. We miss out on the treasure that is on the inside of some still wrapped. Still wrapped. I'm so grateful for the wise man who worshipped Jesus while he was still an infant. When he did not raise anyone from the dead. When he did not cast out any devil. When he did not heal any sick person. When he did not even begin to preach the gospel. So by the time he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me. And everyone was getting excited. They said 30 years ago we saw it in him that he is the king of kings. And some of us as young women and young men in this house, there is something that God needs to show you in a man and in a woman. That's why I still believe Uguti, that is what Uguboniswa is all about. Uguboniswa is not about identifying a person that you must marry, but it is about seeing the greatness that is locked on the inside of a person. To see them beyond their poverty, to see them beyond their joblessness, to see them beyond their background. And to realize that there's something great on the inside of this man. There's something great on the inside of this woman. And if you can make your decisions on those bases, you are going far. You are going very far. You are going very far. Many of us are stuck in life because you are too calculating. You, you want to look. You want to see, you know, what is on the outside. Because what is on the inside, it will take a spiritual eye to see. It will take discernment to see. It will take revelation to see. It takes a kingdom person to see a kingdom person. It takes somebody with, with the eyes that are opened to see something that is locked on the inside of somebody else. And I pray that may our eyes be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to understand, Bazalone, that, that when, we, when we became born again and we became, you know, the kingdom people, we became special people. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2 verse 10 where we have read, it says, who, were once, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God. So in other words, you and I, before we came into the kingdom of God, we might have been regarded as nobodies out there. We were not seen as people. We were not seen as people who can, who can add value. You know, in society, we were seen as people, you know, who don't have much to offer simply because of perhaps where we come from, you know, our educational background, our economic status and so forth and so on. But God says about you and I that as soon as we accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, it says we are now the people of God. We are now a somebody. We are now a person who can be recognized, a person who can be seen, not because of our connections, not because of our money, not because of our education, not because of our houses and our cars, but because of the identity that we have from God himself. We were once nobodies, but now we are somebodies in Christ. You and I, we used not to be taken serious out there, but God now has turned us around. He says, now you are my people. He says, not just my my people, but you are my special kind of people. He says you are my own treasure. In other words, you are very special in the eyes of God. You are God's treasure. That's why the Bible says about you and I that we, the, we are the apple of God's eye. In other words, when somebody touches you, he touches God. That's how you are supposed to see yourself. In every place where you go, stop looking down on yourself because of what you don't have, because of what you are still believing God for. Know this you are very special before the eyes of God. You are God's own special treasure. God treasures you because of the image and the likeness of God that is on the inside of you. Not because of what you have. Not because of what you don't have. It's enough that you are born again. It's enough that you are a child of God. You must not seek for validation from things in this world. But you need to know that God has already affirmed you as his own. God has already accepted you. God has already declared you blessed. God has already said you are the head and not the tail. God has already said you are above and not beneath. He did not wait for you to have a job. He did not wait for you to have a business. He did not wait 
for you to have a fat big bank account. He did not wait for you to be totally restored. Already in Christ, the Bible says, All of my past mistakes, all of my past failures, things that I could not do before. God says, He says, In Him, I am a new creature. He says, In Him, I am the righteousness of God. I have received a new identity in Him. Even though I did not have a name before. But now he has given me a name. Because in the world where we are coming from. But God says it does not matter who you are. It does not matter where you come from. It does not matter who you know. It does not matter whether or not you have connections. God says you are my own special people. You are my own treasure. Let me tell you, don't allow anybody, even your friends, don't allow your families, don't allow your colleagues, don't allow your neighbors to make you feel bad about who you are, to cause you to look down on yourself because you don't have this and you don't have that. Know this, God loves you. God appreciates you. God God saved you, redeemed you with the precious blood of Jesus. God did not wait you for to, to wait for you to become righteous first. But the Bible says, while we were still sinners, while we were still plundered, many of us, while we were still full of hatred, pride, jealousy, while we were still, you know, even bewitching other people with our hearts. Because Some of us, we were witches with our hearts, with the way that we dealt with people. But the Bible tells us that while we were still sinners, God sent his son to come and to die for us. Why? Because God treasures you. God treasures you. We are kingdom people, Vazalwan. We are not just ordinary people. We are kingdom people. You must not devalue yourself because of what you don't have. You must not devalue yourself because of your struggles. You must not devalue yourself because of what you are still going through today and for because of what you are still believing God for. While you are still waiting for is, don't forget this. You are special before the eyes of God. You are treasured by God. You are loved by God. You are blessed by God. You are favored by God. You are not anointed by God. You are protected by God. You are guarded by God. You are surrounded by God. You are treasured by God. Never forget that. Never forget that. Don't devalue yourself. Let me tell you. Let me tell you this. The reason why sometimes women will subject themselves to abuse it is because I'm sure you will relate with this. The first attempt when a guy sees you, a mall, he appreciates you because Umuchen approaches you and attempts to get your attention. And Bese Maum Tugisela, showing that you are not interested, all of a sudden he switches. He says, I suga hamba lente mbi. But if in Mubi Bongbi Zelan, if I'm not shape, why did not why did you even attempt? Okay, as some girl again sitting movie, as some girl sitting movie, it means we equal. Ufuna ba big pair, la ba 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 she. Why unga yanga gibo? I sit, I sit again. Let's give you that benefit of the doubt. Sit okay in movie. Go show to we equal. Um, teto ako. You need to get to a level as a woman where even when a man attempts to tell you that without them you are nothing, you need to pause and tell them that when I was born, you were not even there. You were not even in that room. You were not even in that world. When I was, I existed without you. I grew up without you. I became what I am today without what makes you think. Namtanjo, you have something to look at. What makes you think that I need you to be? treasured by God. Whether you are a woman, whether you are a man, you are treasured by God. Ladies, especially Light Builders Church, I might not be talking to women and ladies in another church or something because for the fear of being in trouble. But I want you to know this. Before the eyes of God, you are redemptively equal. Don't, I'm not saying as a wife you are equal to the husband. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying as a woman, you are redemptively equal to a man. 
Why am I saying that? It's the same blood of Jesus that cleansed me and cleansed you. God did not, he did not say, ah, because we are a woman, as taller man's. No, no, no. Same blood of Jesus. You are worth it. You are worth the blood. You are worth the blood of Jesus. And that is enough. I don't know. May God deliver women. May God deliver. I don't know what makes you think you need a man for you to be blessed. For you to become somebody. It's like you live your life apologetically, patiently waiting for somebody to make you worthy because they said they love you. Come on. God already loves you. God already loves you. That should be enough. Believe God for a car. Believe God for a house. Believe God for a financial breakthrough. Believe God for a business. Believe God for peace. Believe God for joy. Believe God to be happy. You don't need a man to be happy. Let me tell you. Was a washata. Utamanguti utigindo to gucha bulu senking in already. Already you are in trouble. No maso nine dot. Because every day you are going to put a demand on him to make you happy. And there is no human being who has been designed to make anybody happy. Only the joy of the Lord is your strength. Your joy and your peace comes from God. That's why before you are married, you must be whole. Be complete in you. That's why the Bible says we are complete in him. Not in a man. You're not complete once you are married. You are complete in him. You are complete. You see, once you get into marriage with that kind of confidence, there's no man who's going to take advantage of you. Because every day you'll, you'll be not, not namazwi, but just the way that you carry yourself. You'll be sending a message. I'm good. I'm good. God satisfies me. And I'm not saying be rude or be, and that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. But, and, and, and guys, because you're born good, I was a little shame. Uzo, Uzo, Zalangaye, Umut. I'll tell you, Bona, you go to your bonnet. La. Go for that one so that they keep you on toes. The way that you handle them, you know that you are dealing with somebody who knows who they are and whose they are. That's why I always say, say to people, for me, well, if you are my friend, if you are going to use a language that says, ah, I'm not intimidated by that. I'm not intimidated by that. I'm not intimidated by that. Or I'm not intimidated by that. Because what they mean is, you listen to your wife over us. You listen to your wife over us. That's what they mean. And, and if that's what they mean, yes, of course, I listen to my wife over you. You, you don't take care of me like she does. I don't know how to cook. She cooks for me. I, I, I don't know how to sometimes. Listen, as a man, the Bible says we are already in trouble. Already in trouble. The Bible says it's not good for a man to be alone. So, ladies, the desperation is supposed to be from us. Listen, let, let, let's restore your value. The Bible says, he who finds a wife, finds what? A good, listen, you are a good thing as a woman. You are a good thing that must be found. You, mu you must be a good thing that must be found. You must be found. You must sense, did you really, do you really feel like you found me? I don't hear God say, it is not good for a woman to be alone. It's not so good for a man. He says, I will find you a suitable helper. Let, let's, let's take it to another verse. Let's take it to another verse. I'm closing. It, it, it says, live peaceably with your wives, right? And it says, treat them as, treat them as, look, it does not say because they are weak. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. That is not what the Bible says. It says, treat them, treat them like they are weak. Treat them like they are, the way you handle them. It's because 
the vessel, the vessel on the outside is soft. The vessel on the outside is, is, is tender. So, so when you handle them, handle them with care in other words, right? But if they are weak, it means we are weaker. If they are weaker, it means we are weak. Why? Because when I was alone, God said, let me find you help. He was like, ha, ah, on your own. Let me find you help. He said, let me find, on your own, you are a disaster. On your own, you are about to fall apart. On your own, you will make wrong. Let me find you help. So if I need help, who's weak now? If there's a pillar here. Okay, why do we have this pillar here? This is a pillar, right? Why do we have the pillar? To help the wall. So the wall without the pillar is weak. So don't allow no tradition, no culture to make you feel like you know you are a as a woman, you are a kingdom person. You are a kingdom person. You belong to God. As a man, also, you are a kingdom man. Stop behaving like because my closing point is this. As kingdom people, we are separated people. In the book of Revelations, John sees a vision of an angel. To cut the long story short, he hears a voice that says, come out from among them, my people. So as kingdom people, even though we are in the world, we don't live like the world. We don't behave like the world. In other words, as a kingdom man, as a kingdom person who is a man, I'm not going to take counsel from people who are not of this kingdom because they will want me to do life, to do marriage, to do family according to their standards in the world. That's why the Bible says, do not love the world. So in other words, no matter how much groove can be in the world, I don't need groove to be whole. I don't need proof to feel like a man. I don't need to come and say, Ngati Vev, Ngati Ace, to feel like I am a man. Because there are other men out there who are struggling with their identity. They are struggling with who they are. They feel like, in order for me to be seen like I'm the man. Because that's the language we use, right? If you do something wrong and something unbecoming, and then we say, you are the man. You are the man on the basis of nonsense that you've just done. I always call, or simply because I walked in and I bought so many bottles and put them on the table. I don't need to do that to feel like I am a man. I am a man in Christ. I am a man in the kingdom of God. I am a man in taking care of my children. I am a man in taking care of my wife. I am a man in loving my wife. I am a man in loving my children. I am a, I'm a man in serving God. I am a man in preaching the gospel. That's what makes me a man. That's what makes me a man. Not this thing of influencing each other. Ah, so even if I have nothing to say, what a powerful one. Ah, we don't tend to handle. We tell you, um, um, fast we are pega. Now we busy, we pega. We are kitchen. Yeah, go right. Um, for now just to appreciate to butle back. Go to wow, what a wife. She's cooking for me. I love it when she's cooking. I love to see her serve me. the kingdom, that's the behavior of the kingdom person to come out from among them. Don't love the world. Don't love the world. Don't love the world. Don't love the world. But listen, I, I don't like the world to a point that even when they, what they are doing seems so nice, even in their niceness, I don't like them. It's like, ah, it's cool, but it's not a kingdom song. Ah, I don't like it. I don't like it. We admire the world too much. That's why we want to become like the world. We admire the world so much. As Christians, we are defeated with these powerful principles that we have. 
Because we, we think, we are under the impression that the world lives better than us. As a child of God. That's, I'm having life. And life in a impilo iatikima joy peace. I I don't have to act and perform. I don't have to. I don't have to. I'm cool like this. I'm fine. As you see, God teaches you to live life accurately. God teaches you to live. Life accurately according to his design. Satan has designed an artificial life and convinced many that this is what life is. As long as you, you are not at a level at which you are saying to yourself, even when I don't have a car in a house now and I die tomorrow, it doesn't matter. But hey, how many cars did you have? I had five, but again, no. These are the things that we use for here. That's why we don't worship them. It's a tool, it's a resource. How many people are idolizing things that they have? Do you know that there are Christians who are stressed? Not because God does not love them. Not because Jesus did not save them. They are stressed because they don't have what the world has. And they are stressed by it. And some of us, we share our sorrows with non-believers. That's why they will never respect our God. the way Many of us, we are being discipled by the world instead of discipling the world. They're discipling us. That's why Bazook suggests tell you to come back to Mazi. That's why Utolu Mundo Sindhi Sue C. I'm by you twice. In fact, in your life, man, you sin this way. See, you sin this way. Short, you can be saved, and 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 agree to something like that. Can't. I'm going to tell us with his eyes wide open. Go go into a wrong or up. It's because you you tell me what you are cool. Wanga Paula la penola. But I as I'm busy, go no me no move you baba wang sis. That's why I'm going to mean for you mangabe, you don't love the world. Ungal tan to that point. Mabat konu babo ungak siza. Uti ya usizo wena wak siza, but I can zilong siza me. Because then uzochelo umuntu from the kingdom of darkness. What to do? A keep from the principles of your kingdom. And you will come back. Wanting to paste religion onto this experience that comes from darkness. That's why many of them come back talking about God. Being initiated by people who have got nothing to do with the kingdom of God. We are kingdom people. That's who we are. We are kingdom people and we need to behave as such. Let's stand on our feet as we close. Let's lift up our hands. Keep us, oh God in your kingdom. Keep us as kingdom people. May we understand who we are. May we understand what you have called us for. Open our eyes. Let us see your kingdom. Let us experience your kingdom. Let us participate in this kingdom in a meaningful way 
let us benefit from this kingdom. Because this kingdom is for us. It is our inheritance. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone in this room. Anyone, oh God, who does not feel worthy. Anyone who has been made to feel like they don't deserve your love, like they don't deserve your blessing, that they don't deserve good life, success. I pray for them today that their eyes will be opened and that they will be reminded that they are special before you, that they are worth something, that they are treasured by you as they are. By virtue of redemption, Lord, may they know that they are treasured and they deserve everything that you have promised them and they are going to experience it in their lives in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. We silence the voice of Satan that is trying to tell them that they are not worthy. We silence the voice of Satan that is trying to tell them that they don't deserve what they are believing you for. We silence the voice of doubt. We cancel it. We nullify it. And we declare upon their lives that they will break through. That they will break out. That they will arise in the name of Jesus Christ and experience your goodness. And experience your favor and your blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. That we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation, O oh God. You have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. With every head bowed. Every eye closed. If you are in this room, you've never made that decision to be born again so that you can see this kingdom and enter into it. Remember, Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot see or enter into this kingdom. You must be born again. You must be born again. You, you don't just belong to this kingdom and become a kingdom person just by coming to church. But you become a kingdom person by being born again. And if you are in this room, you've never taken that decision to be born again. To declare your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can be born again. I want to give you that chance. I want to give you that opportunity. From wherever you are across this room, and you're saying, Mfundi, say, that's me. I want to be born again today. Please raise up your right hand nice and high so that I can see it and so that I can pray with you this morning. You say, Mfundi, that's me. I want to be born again today. Raise up your hand. And even if you were once born again, but something happened somewhere down the line and you are in a place where you say, I no longer feel worthy. I no longer feel like I have a true and a living relationship with God. But today, I want to recommit and rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if you are that person, please raise up your hand so that we can pray with you this morning for you to be saved and for you to be born again. Raise up your hand nice and high so that I can see it. God bless you, sir. If there's somebody else, please raise up your hand. God bless you, sir. If there's somebody else, God bless you. If there's somebody else, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can you please just take another step? Take your belongings where you are. Just come to the front quickly. They are going to direct you where you are going to stand. We just want to quickly pray with you for you to be born again, for your eyes to be opened, to see and to enter into the kingdom of God this morning. Let's clap our hands for them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Even the little ones are coming. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. 
God bless you, my brother. God bless you. 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 Bunga parami sang sang la put. God bless you. Come. Thank you. God bless 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 you. Let me ask Pastor Tulani to come and please pray with them quickly. Congratulations. This is the best decision you can ever make. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're still here and you want to come, please don't doubt. If you are standing next to somebody and you see them, they want to come, uh, please encourage them. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're watching us online and you were blessed and you want to give your life to God, please wait for instructions. They're going to give you instructions and, and, and make this prayer uh, together with us. Let's put our hands together. May God bless you. Yes, 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 yes. God wants to restore your life. God wants to restore your life. May God bless you, Sissy. May God bless you, my sister. The enemy might have plundered you. The enemy might have stolen some things in your life. The enemy wants to destroy you, but God wants to restore your life. He wants to give you life, and he wants to give you life abundantly. Hallelujah. May God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. We are in a revival. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands. and us pagam si zanja tina songe. Sisholom tanda zemvagwam. And let's help them, Bazalon. Hallelujah. And let's stretch our hands towards them and pray together with them this prayer. Ngela songe si tinkosu jesu. Si abonga nam shanje. Le tubo si palona. Ngentlezi yo si akolwa. Ngomlomo si avuma. Ugutu wafa. Wafeli zono zetu. Si shanze. Yekazlako, Usenze, Sibenga Banduana, Bagankulungul, Sivula Meso, Uguze Sibone, Umbuso Wako, Siabonga, Uguti Nkulungulwetu, Nam Sanje, Usenza Banduana, Bagankulungul, and we belong to your kingdom in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for these your children. We thank you, Father, for what you are doing in this place. Thank you for what you're doing in this church. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that you have chosen these, oh God, to be part of your kingdom in the name of Jesus, to be a special people, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to become your treasure, oh God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that even as they walk out, oh God, in the name of Jesus of this place, may they walk in the name of Jesus with boldness and the confidence of knowing in the name of Jesus that they are your children and that they are your special people, oh God. In the name of Jesus, that you have chosen them today, oh God, that they are a holy priesthood, oh God. In the name of Jesus, whatever lies that the enemy has been telling in Jesus' name and whispering, oh God, in their ears, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. We shut his voice in the name of Jesus. But these, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ will walk with boldness and confidence in Jesus' name, knowing that God is with us in the name of Jesus. Father, we celebrate together with the heavens in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for the great harvest in this season, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We give your name praise in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus and celebrate him. Come on, Builders Church. Come on. We can do better than that. Hallelujah. God is doing great things in our midst. Hallelujah. What God is doing is marvelous. Hallelujah. Come on. Put those hands together. Celebrate God. Hallelujah. May God bless you. You will never be the same again. Please uh, kindly follow uh, Nango Sisi of Blue. Uh, they're going to lead you to a room. In that room, you're going to find people there. Now, but they've been through what you are going through now. They know exactly how you feel. And I plead with you, take whatever instruction they will give to you because it's Oxiza as you start this new journey in Onkulunkulu. Hallelujah. Nati, this is where we started. Don't be ashamed. Nati Safiga, sing ayaz lento Onkulunkulu. But Onkulunkulu was faithful to keep us. And Nam Shanje, at least we have an idea of Ugutu Onkulunkulu Ban and we have an idea of his kingdom. So do that uh, as you follow Nangu Sisi, raise up your hand, Nandi. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together, Bazalone, and celebrate what God is doing at Builders Church. Aibo, Aibo, Builders, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's encourage them. Hallelujah. 
Even if you were afraid to come langa pambil mshambu na mashoni, but just grab somebody, uh, grab somebody, uh, those ladies and, and those gentlemen who are wearing blue blue t-shirts, grab somebody and say, I want to receive Jesus because I believe that God had an appointment with you. That is why you are here this morning. So, unga lenzi puta, logo tubuyele kaya, unga senzangi snumo, so gwa mgelu chesu, njenge nkosto msindisi. Siya bonga bazalone, thank you so much for coming. Uh, please uh, make sure that before you go home, fellowship with somebody. We are an inviting church, but we are a loving church as well. Hallelujah. So, love somebody, encourage somebody, even as we are starting a new week, and remember bazalone, we are the people of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Even as we go back to our different life uh, tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.